guys so i hope you have completed our ccna course and uh, that really gives you understanding of the basic networking right that is an associate level and you get an understanding of your network that how it works at the basic level but when it comes to get a job then that is not sufficient to get job at a good experience level if you are having two to three years of experience then it's fine you go ahead with the ccna but if you are having more experience or you want to proceed further then you need some other expertise right either you need deep understanding in the any of the routing protocols like ospf bgp or it's uh, we can say eigrp or dhcp there can be n number of protocols where you need the understanding right but only ccna is not sufficient you need some other stuffs so for that one either they you are having multiple options right either you can go for the service provider and uh, you can increase your expertise enhance your expertise in the mpls before mpls you have to learn bgp right so you have good understanding of that uh, mpls bgp ospf or other protocols like uh, eigrp so these are highly required whenever you are going for the isp so after ccna you are one path you can choose that isp another is that one you can go for the network security so in network security you can go for the firewalls you may get expertise in any of the firewalls like cisco asa or palo alto like checkpoint fortinet there are so many firewalls checkpoint and i just said fortinet right so these are the firewalls and the currently that is highly used that is a palo alto and that's also just based on the customer requirement on what they have bought it so but still palo alto is the most popular one after that it goes to checkpoint and the cisco asa because cisco asa provides only on the l3 and l4 support right or the fil packet filtering based on this uh, layer 3 and layer 4 and if you want uh, application layer l7 l7 then you have to include some other devices like ips or ids and processing of and uh, if you talk about this palo alto checkpoint and fortinet we also call it them as a ngfw next generation firewall so they are just uh, gives give you more leverage to control the traffic based on that you can allow or deny the traffic so that's the second way after that when you can also go for the clouds right uh, cloud uh, like you can learn aws or you can learn gci google cloud okay you can also go for azure that is from microsoft so and one more way we can learn for the network automation st van that's uh, in craze right now that's so much popular so a lot of things you can do you once you achieve your ccna you are having a knowledge of ccna after that one you can go ahead in the multiple fields but obviously you cannot learn all of them together and even if you learn one of them uh, you get a good track and if you learn two technologies like look, let's say you have learned that mpls bgp uspf in agrp as well as you have also learned some of the firewalls not all because the basic understanding is common in all of them just gui or the syntax makes a difference remaining everything is same same is with the cloud if you know one of the clouds you can easily correlate the things and go ahead with the another vendors same thing with the sdvn so the main thing is that if you know two technologies you know isp uh, you get uh, know the network security as well so what you do you get most of the jobs it's like uh, if you uh, know only with the bgp you get the 20 percent job of the networking if you uh, know the network security you get another 20 percent i these percentage may vary because obviously their scope is not uh, equally divided but uh, obviously the chances of getting job are the path in the career progression will be more 
right if you learn the clouds as well you get uh, more number of jobs if any of the opening is coming in the isp you can apply for that anywhere is the requirement of that any of the firewalls configuration you can apply for that if there is a requirement of that cloud configuration you can apply for that one obviously right so with this type of things you have more chances of getting a job or getting more money ultimately job is to get the job and uh, earn money finally so that's what you can do so right now what i am planning that uh, i am just uh, going to start firewall okay it means that uh, i will be focusing on the network security concept or the basic things are going to be same in all of the firewalls but uh, i will take the basic understanding of the firewall and then i am going to fake focus on the checkpoint means uh, i will be telling everything about the checkpoint firewall and if you are smart enough you can easily correlate the things if you know very well the checkpoint you can also work on the fortinet and you can also work on the palo alto but obviously with some understanding right because if you go to the configuration of the vpn then obviously the configuration of the vpn in the gui will be different but if you talk about the concept of before the configuration that will be same as it is there is no change in that one clear guys so what i am going to do i just uh, tell you that what i am going to cover in the checkpoint firewall okay so i am going to start checkpoint checkpoint you might be thinking that what is this checkpoint a checkpoint is a vendor or we can say a company and that is manufacturing the firewalls right so if you don't know what the firewall is then don't worry i am going to cover basic of that one right i will start from the sketch that what is the firewall then after that the basic understanding if you develop the basic idea that what it is then i will discuss the architecture of the device okay so in the architecture what i am going to cover that how the packet is flowing what are the criteria it is matching while forwarding the packet right uh, it has to deny or permit the packet that whether uh, there some of the person requesting any of the website then he can easily go over there or he cannot so obviously that totally depends on the architecture that how any of the device processes the packet so based on that processing only it decides that whether it will be allowed or it will not right after that one i will see the policy configuration that how different types of policies we can configure or we can say the rules based on these rules only or the policies only the firewall makes a decision that whether it has to allow or deny the traffic right once we have done that part we will learn that if our device fail so how can we restore the backup in the running stages and if it is false fails uh, sorry uh, when it is working very fine how we can take the backup and when it is fails then how we can restore it so we'll discuss both the things how we'll take the backup and how we restore it so obviously uh, there's some ha configuration is always be running right ha is like high availability and uh, one of the firewall remains in the standby and another one is working so obviously that concept is always running there is a thing but it's still sometimes we need that backup and restore concept so i will also discuss that one that how we are going to cover up those things right after that one uh, we are going to cover some layer 7 features so when we talk about the layer 7 features so in the if you uh, have gone through the acl right access control list in the routers uh, you might be aware of that uh, the packet can be filtered or if we can say that it is allowed or denied based on the source and destination ip address we can say sip and dip 
and if you are using the extended acl in that case that is also a feature of port numbers that we can allow the traffic based on the port numbers as well but uh, we don't have any control over the url right if uh, you want to block only facebook.com then you cannot do it via acl for that one because facebook.com or the url whatever you are putting that is a layer 7 feature so that we are going to cover in this checkpoint we also have a concept of like ng fw that's what i have just described before sometime we call it as a next generation firewall it means that that's this firewall is having control from layer 1 to layer 7 all the type of things we can control it based on everything so don't worry we are going to cover everything in detail so after that one we will also cover up the things like uh, app id uh, we call it as an application id so app id is a type of thing uh, like if you are accessing facebook right the facebook is allowed but still inside of facebook you can see the news feed you can chat with the person uh, you want to chat but same time you cannot play games right so games will be blocked facebook games that will be blocked so that is the type of app id uh, we are having the different app id for the different features of our facebook like uh, news feed will be having different app id chat will be having some different app id games will be having some different app id or if you are downloading any of the photo or video that is having some different uh, function right so based on those things how we can allow or deny the traffic so that's what we are going to learn in this uh, checkpoint firewall and uh, obviously the most important thing that is called as a file blocking you might be aware right most of the files are malicious and uh, because of those malicious activities our your system get infected you are having virus or you are part of a botnet attack that you are contributing in the ddos attack or your files are getting encrypted and you are victim of the ransomware so there are a lot of things so obviously that always starts with the files so we will learn how to uh, block the files based on the different signature obviously whenever we are having the feature of this file blocking we have to detect some diff specific type of files then only uh, we uh, can just uh, block or allow based on the criteria what we have defined correct and uh, at the last and that the most important we are going to cover the vpn concept that virtual private network and inside the vpn uh, we will cover like uh, ipsec vpn okay and uh, then we will also have a look on the ssl vpn and the most important part that is pki right or we can uh, know the certificate authority how can we generate the certificate we will learn about the http and https traffic how this traffic uh, gets converted from http https what is the functioning of that one how does they really work how our browsing is getting secured right we say that uh, whenever we use that https then our uh, traffic is secured but how actually that is secured that we will come to in the detail uh, throughout our session so that's going to be around uh, uh, 20 to 30 classes 20 to 30 no, not say like we said say 25 to 30 because my ideal uh, plan is to have 28 sessions so but still it depends that sometimes we are good in the flow and sometimes we are not so something in between a bit uh, 25 to 30 um, hours session so that is quite sufficient what i have planned but still we will see at the end that how it goes actually and uh, we'll i'm also although i was planning to stop at the vpn but i think that ha is also a very important part and i will cover that when ha is called as an high availability so in that case the two devices work together and we are having two interfaces connected with each other and then 
uh, they just uh, share the connections between each other and if any of the device goes down then the traffic is being shifted to another firewall right so our uh, users are not uh, facing an issue with that thing that our hardware in between goes down so it's like a redundancy type of things uh, that one of the firewall can be in a standby and another one can be working so we can say that active passive or active active configuration that that's also depends on the requirement whatever the enterprise has suggested that's what we are going to cover it on it okay so that's quite good i think uh, for this and uh, introduction and uh, if you have any questions that how we are going to cover and if you have any suggestions that what else i should cover in that uh, firewalls or in the network security you can suggest or write in the comment section or directly reach to me you have multiple options to reach me right so meanwhile uh, that's enough for that introduction session and uh, let's see you in the next session and i will start with the basic things that what is a firewall and uh, then we will slowly focus just on the checkpoint because the uh, it is uh, totally based on the gui right and uh, Yes, and the another part, I think, uh, which one is the Palo Alto? That's also a GUI based, and uh, Cisco ASO ASC is also uh, nowadays uh, totally, not totally, in fact, but they are trying to convert it in the uh, GUI using that ASDM portal. So that's also GUI based. It's, they are trying because most of the vendors are trying to be user friendly, and uh, they think that uh, once you are running the command, uh, you a new user feels a little awkward and they do not aware of that what to do or what command to be run but when you are seeing the options okay i can click it there okay i can, this is the ip address it is feels easy but sometimes uh, you know people also love to do configuration in the cli or the command prompt like me i just uh, I do not feel comfortable when it is a GUI. Whenever it is a CLI, I feel very confident. Okay, that I can do it. So it's just totally <laughs> uh, our choice. So that's okay. And uh, let's see that what else uh, we are having in the network security. Till that, bye bye. See you soon.